an event has been occurring in the United States, political event that has, for me, incredible implications. And I don't know that anybody has actually drawn out these implications in the way that I see them. There's a man named George Santos who got elected to Congress in a formerly Democratic district outside of New York, Long Island and Queens. And it's been revealed that he made up every aspect of not only his biography, but of his identity. Absolutely incredible, yeah. So he made up that he uh, went to college and he went to Baruch College and got a degree and got an MBA at NYU. None of that's true. He doesn't have a college degree. Then he made up working for Goldman Sachs and another other mm-hmm. financial firms and all the positions he had. And that all turned out not to be true. Okay, that's alarming enough. But then he made up that his mother's parents were European Jews who escaped the Holocaust to Brazil, which is where his mother was born. And that so he's sort of a Holocaust descendant. Right. He made that up. Now, all those other things you can find out by calling up Goldman Sachs or NYU and saying, oh, did a guy named George Santos with this birthday graduate from uh, work for you? And they say, no. <clears throat> it's a little harder. So, But there are people who do that. And how, there are Holocaust researchers who say, well, th- his parents, uh, his mother's parents, there's nobody by that name who came, uh, left Europe. So then he said, oh, they had a different name. That, that's how he reacts to everything. He makes up a new fact. And then they said, well, there's nobody with that name. Oh, and while we were at it, we looked up his mother's parents, and they were born in Brazil before the war. We can find that out. Then he declared that his own mother died in 9-11. And then people said, well, there's nobody with your mother's name listed among the victims of 9-11. So then he goes, oh... She died of cancer that she got from that. Um, Then he goes, there was the shooting where somebody came in and killed a bunch of gay people. George Santos is gay, although he was married and divorced only a year to a woman. There's nothing about George Santos that you can vouchsafe and say, well, this is true about him. So he's claimed that four, he has a giant corporation, he claims. It turns out he owns no property in New York City. And he said four of his employees were killed in this raid on the nightclub, but he can't name them. And then when they try and look it up, none of them are listed as employees of this fake company that he has. And he says, oh, they were in the process. I mean, you can play this game forever. Yeah. And so there's two things I want to say about it that I haven't seen anybody 100% say. One is George Santos is an example of a Facebook personality, by which I mean you write an idea down and you get a like. And if you get a like, then you write more of that (laughs) idea down. So George George Santos got elected to Congress in a previously Democratic district, and he won by eight points. So he's good at looking around and seeing what people like. Oh, I'm a gay Latino Latino Jew whose grandparents escaped the Holocaust, whose mother died in 9-11, whose employees were killed in anti-gay attacks. He's He's got the algorithm down, right? He's an algorithm-generated human being. <clears throat> and naturally, and whenever they question a person like that, they get upset that you're questioning them. Mm-hmm. They start going, look, I've admitted that I overstated my biographical accomplishments. Why, what are you nitpicking for? And so it's sort of like I'm an algorithm-created human being 
People like me. They elected me. You like me. And of course, a, a lot of this applies also to Donald Trump. He sort of doesn't have a core identity. He has an identity that people like who he presents himself to be and vote for him. And that's sort of everything that he is. And that's the, the scary thing is that there's people who are writing about this, that there's a tendency for this to be the new human being, the algorithm created personality, as opposed to somebody who has an actual identity, which it can, you can get dislike if you have an actual identity, if you say, well, I don't believe that. So that's one component that I wanted to just marvel about. The other component is when you run for Congress, you're running against another person. Right. And that don't they have people that all they had to do to find out, you can call up NYU and say, did a man with this name and age. That's how I thought about it. Like even the, I mean, in the small town Vermont in the, at the state level, I just happen to know people and I've talked to people that the, the, even the cheapest possible campaign will have a person on the campaign that digs up some information about the other person. I mean, you don't have to take much more than a cursory glance at stuff to say something's fishy. So what the hell happened? Right. How does a Latinx guy, how was he a Holocaust survivor? How, how did that happen exactly? And <clears throat> how did he, he's got a lot of funds from somewhere to fund his campaign. How did he get all yeah. that money? Like who, he re that's the one true thing. He's got money. I mean, he has some way of paying for things that he needs to pay for. But that's only recently. He, yeah. he scofflaw and paying his rent. Somebody gave him money to do this, which is where people feel uh, the rubber hits the road. They're going to say somebody mm -hmm. wanted this guy to get elected, gave him money, and he made up a backstory. But what I reflect on, I'm thinking about writing a book called To Tell the Truth. If you come out and say popular sounding things really decisively, sort of nobody's going to contradict. Who's going to argue with a guy that his grandparents survived the Holocaust? What are you, an animal? My grandparents survived the Holocaust, thank God. And that's why I'm here today. And I'm Jewish. And you can't argue with somebody like that. What kind of person would do that? And so... On the one hand, people create their own identities by algorithm, and then they promote and market that. And of course, uh, Donald Trump's income taxes have just come out. And he's really a lousy businessman and has lost money throughout his career. But his father was a multimillion billionaire with properties whose value has expanded. But nobody could really, con I mean, who's going to contradict Donald Trump and say, well, you're full of shit you're a business failure. And so that's the world that we face. And this man, George Santos, on the one hand, people are saying, are they really just going to let him in Congress now? I mean, he made up his entire resume, claimed he's a Holocaust descendant, uh, claimed he had charities, uh, claimed that his employees were shot for being gay. Are they just going to let him into Congress? And that's fine. And nobody's going to say anything about that. The way I look at it is, in a strange sense, he's almost the perfect candidate. He's not saddled with any actual identity or attitudes, which is <laughs> so inconvenient. Yeah. So it's just my thought for the day is George Santos... He's like AI. He's it, like an artificial, uh, artificially intelligent thing. That's a funny story. Nobody's made that point. Well, so a couple of people said, if that's really his name, George Santos. Yeah. But you're saying, what if there's really no George Santos? You know what I mean? He's just a recreation, a fictive figure that they ran for president, which sounds like some movie that we've all seen. Yeah, right, right.
So just a thought for today, uh, George Santos is the model for America in whatever century and year 2023 we're going into. Is this like uh, Instagram influencer comes to life in the real world? Like uh, we talked about previously, you know, articles written about how especially teenage girls get on Instagram and they talk about addiction to social media. And the big part of it is they will take pictures of themselves that are unrealistic and there are filters on those pictures. And there are only images of them doing things that they know their cohort would find interesting or, you know, um, glamorous. And that's not them. You go out to coffee with that person and instantly figure out they're, they're so much more. And so now this is like the, the same but thing. There's except another it's being taken. extension of that. Yeah, there are yeah, people yeah. who create themselves, men, who get women to commit to them. Like the catfishing thing. And they never thing. meet. Right. They always say, oh, I can't. Oh, I'm, go oh, I'm going to. I can't be in England. And they're far away. And they list all these traits. And then occasionally they meet. Sometimes they have money, which is really a a pilfering scheme. They've got money from other people. And a woman, a norm, sometimes an ordinary, normal, regular person commits her life to a person who's just made up who they are. That right. doesn't work for all that, isn't there? In, uh... you get a cat, it's called catfishing, and that's a good way to put it. And now, so now you're saying, without being a conspiracy theorist exactly, that given the fact that, that this happened, that the wool was pulled over all of our eyes for a while, and it's only now being uncovered. Is at least possible to conspire if you want. If you you could create a, the, a, an image of a person, you just take a template of a human being and say, "I'm going to add this feature to you and this feature to you," and push them out. And now that's the person who's governing a swath of the population. They're representing en enormous numbers of people. So nobody has written a book, a t article called George Santos. How to catfish a nation, America. Right, right, right. And obviously, the next novel is catfishing America and creating an imaginary president. That a person whose identity doesn't exist. Right. Well, anyway, so, um, so go uh, governance in the matrix. That's so. That's it's so interesting. Falling in love and being governed and ruled by nobody. We like to think it wouldn't happen to you and me, Zach, and to people who uh, follow our thinking. We're ready to put ourselves out on a limb, say stupid things, and be disapproved of. But at least we exist. I call that, uh, what was the opposite called? Virtue signaling is what you do when you're trying to be, create a... Uh, politician and say I'm good for these reasons. We're, we're vice signalers. It's like we believe this, and you probably hate us, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. We don't want to just count up our value by our enemies, but we have one or two. Right, With that pleasant you. thought, Zach. Au revoir. Till next time. <laughs>